blow out there in the YouTube world. So it's uh, this is video number three now of our series of uh, you know the, the best and worst traits of each sign of the tropical zodiac. So where did we leave off? The autumn signs, Libra, my sun, like not my like S U S. So sun. who's doing the positive and who's doing the negative, right? Oh, I don't know. You should, maybe you should start with the negative, then I'll defend it. That's his sun sign, so I get to pick on his sign, huh? How often do we get to do that? We get to be like, on your <laughs> sign. Well, I get, I get the opportunity today, right now. And you get to partake with me. So, Libra. Libra. That's my name. They're, Libra is just like, don't, don't do it. Uh, I got it. Like, um, incredibly indecisive. I'm sorry on that, but that's... Proudly indecisive. That's one of the main ones, because, you know, they're like, I can see both sides. No, then so I'll just flip a coin. So I'm not going to pick one. Like, they are very often someone who's going to be on the fence, and they're going to be totally fine with that. They're like, Holocaust? What are you talking about? Whose fault is that? Right? Random.org makes all of my decisions for me. Random. That's exactly... Because then there's no bias, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of them will see things in that way. And they're all about, like, they're ruled by Venus, so they're all about, like, harmony and beauty and kind of trying to keep the balance. And they are one of, of all of the 12 zodiac signs, I will say. They are pretty much, like... Kind of the con artists of the zodiac. They will tell you what you want to hear, and you'll be like, "Oh, really?" Why? And they'll just like they can really uber inflate their ego due to like their genuine self-interest, or not necessarily genuine, but disgenuine interest, where they're just kind of like, "Uh huh, uh huh." Like they can have a tendency to be very like charming and soothing and. They have a way with words that can like kind of like woo you in, and then you realize that's not necessarily what's going on, right? Because at the opposite side, they can be kind of argumentative. Uh, I'm gonna bridge into like where Tristan's gonna continue this, yes. but um, they can because they often see both sides. As soon as you bring up one side, they're gonna bring up the other, and like. It's not really like they're trying to like piss on your parade, but they're like trying to bring up opposing information and facts just to bring balance or to bring equality to the situation, which they feel you might be biasing with your opinions and facts because they might be slanted, as most people tend to do when they're trying to formulate. If you're looking to something to validate or justify your experience, people find things to do just so, but Libras know more than anything that you need to look at both sides, and if you're not doing so, they're going to remind you that you've overlooked some stuff. That's exactly right. When anybody can see one side of anything, it just, you know, which, which is anybody with an opinion about anything, that just shows that there's, they don't know the other side. So, you know, there is no right or wrong. What, what's better, chocolate or vanilla? Who cares? Just, you know, have whatever you want. You know, what's better, Hitler or, um, you know, rainbows and puppy dogs? Who cares? Whatever, have whatever you want. If you like the rainbows and puppy dogs or if you like the Hitler, you know. Now, see, because strokes. I'm a Taurus, like, I don't know, I know this doesn't apply to this part of this video series, but if you're a Taurus, or you have Tauric aspects, which still might be applicable to you, bothers me a little bit, because we can have like a fixed opinion on something. And when people bring up contrary opinions to it, it can be very seen as like a hurtful or resentful thing. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily to be... You shouldn't interpret it that way, because it's not meant to be brought out that way by people of Libra's nature. Like... So it can be a clash between us, and it, it has been many times in the past. You know, we're, we're beginning to be more understanding of each other through astrology, through, uh, in addition to other things. But, but yes, that is a clash between Librans and Taurians, if, uh, you know, if that applies to you and anybody that you know. So, uh, so yeah, that's sort of the, uh, you know, bad side, indecisive, good side, 
indecisive. Next will be Scorpio, uh, not water sign. Don't really like those water signs, but um, they're all emotional. Like, they are. That sums up water signs for you. Yeah. So um, so Scorpio, they they have that stinger thing. They like to hurt too. But people don't like being hurt. Do we want to do good or who's doing good and who's doing well, bad? Well, I, I just started with the bad one. So you should do bad. Say all the bad and I'll just say the good. Well, I mean, you know, okay. So so that's one thing. They can do I'm the good little... now. Yeah, yeah, you can be the good. They're also, I find them a little irrational. You know, if they just right away backlash at everything you say. It's hard to have an intelligent or a civil conversation with them. And I also think that they can be, like, too caught up in um, things like religion or things that label themselves. They, they, they like to define themselves in certain ways, so, so I'm not really crazy about that aspect of them either. Anything good you can say? So I get the positive. Um, well, they're very intense, meaning if they do have your attention, or you have their attention, then you will find that they give you their all in that moment. Like, the moment might be, um, what would you call it? Um, intermittent, not very, just kind of like flash and it's gone kind of thing, but kind of like a laser beam and a disco ball, boom, 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 boom. Very intense, but when you have it for that moment, it can seem fully on like, you know, their gaze is supposed to be very intense, and their intentions they seem to be very straightforward. They will often speak in a... They are ruled by Mars, so... Scorpio. And it gives them, much like Aries, uh, that kind of uh, dictatorship. A little bit of uh, being an authoritative figure. And speaking from a position or a seat of power. In which they do so in a way that you do not know what they know. And they, you're more privileged to be in their presence because they're they're the one in control of the situation and they like to maintain things in that manner because being ruled by Mars they want order and they want control and they also want to know that they have loyalty because this sign is also very heavily ruled by loyal like the loyal aspects of human nature and much like that, there is the flip coin side to, well, what's the opposite of loyalty? Betrayal. And if you're betrayed by one of these people, it's because you have done something that has really, really hurt them inside, and they have like kind of like a lash back tendency, which is their negative Scorpio trait. Which, yeah, which is their tail. Which Tristan was taking control of the negative, but... But that's a very well that that's way to prove my point. And then, oh no, what's uh, what's Scorpio ruled by anyway? Mars. Mars, yeah, yeah. That, that's their fighting nature. That's their, that's their tail. That's their argumentativeness. That's their, you know, the god of war. Got to be a water sign and Mars. Like that's so conflicting in my mind. But, um, Did we do this for you? No, we have one more to do. Sagittarius, a fire sign. The archer. Uh, yeah, yes it is. It has a bow, it has a quiver. Okay, so I did the positive for the last, so you should do the positive, positive to start. Okay, well, they, uh, well, what do we know about Sagittarius? Okay. They're, they're, uh... Okay, so it's a, now we're a mutable sign. So it's the mutable fire sign. So it's, uh, you know, they're determined, they, you know, know what they want, they know what... Uh, how to get it they're very uh you know they can see far into the distance they can they have good foresight and good planning ahead abilities um so i guess that's in a nutshell uh, what's so great about sag yeah and all of those all of all of those positive traits can be attributed to their ruling planet being jupiter right yes the planet of getting stuff done now Jupiter is the god of higher realm spirituality and higher realm spiritual thought. And that sense of love, kindness, kinship, compassion, brotherhood, all of that is shared under Jupiter. But at the same time, it also rules over... 
excuse me, alcohol, and being juvenile, being a little bit childish, not worrying so much about the serious aspects of nature, and more pondering on the higher realms of spiritual thought. And a lot of times these people can get lost in that higher realm of spiritual thought, where they don't take the physical realm as seriously as they should. And they often get lost in this, where they might find themselves in a daydream kind of fantasy world, which they themselves might perceive as being positive at that moment. But all of their family and friends see them as being reclusive, and a hideaway, and being, you know, A hermit, like, yeah, a hermit, like living in your own dreams, in your own imaginations, which might be beautiful in your own creation, but no one else can see that. And Sagittarius being governing over the ninth house, which is um, travel and philosophy, we have to remember that like these people like to go, go, go. They like to be on the move, and they like higher realm thought. They don't like stagnation and thoughts that bring them down into a material plane which grounds them in a sense that is feels unnatural to them. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, Did I cover the positive and the negative? No, or? I think I covered the positive at the beginning a little bit, but um, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty suitable for the, the, the video of the autumn signs. Yeah. And uh, if you stay tuned for part four, we'll do the winter signs, the last one. So, yeah. So have a goodbye.